sometimes. Problems have simple solutions. Previously, when working on Mat A500 Plus, which I'd recently installed a terrible file accelerator in, I was having problems getting compact flashcards to work reliably using the IDE header. I eventually resorted to using a Discon module. Discon module is a little device, one of these in fact, that acts like a hard drive, are designed for industrial applications and therefore are much more resilient and are capable of far more read and write activity than a compact flash would be. The only issue I found is that that wouldn't fit in the case. So I hit KCAD and came up with a very simple adapter. This. This should allow me to lie the disk on module flat and also adds the creature comfort of an activity LED. Generally speaking, all these projects that I'm doing on my channel, particularly where I'm creating PCBs or doing 3D printing, it's to solve a problem that I have. And in some cases, that problem is also experienced by other people. And that's why I tend to either offer my projects as kits or upload them to PCBWay's shared projects. PCBWay are the sponsor of this video and they can provide prototype PCBs for as little as $5. And they've been doing that for well over 11 years now. They've built up a plethora of extra services alongside their PCB manufacturing, such as 3D printing, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication. All of this is available at PCBWay.com. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So back to solving problems. Well, these little circuit boards obviously arrived because I'm holding one in my hand. Let's have a little build and test montage, and then I'll come back and explain what actually went wrong. Rather than testing it initially in the Amiga, I'm going to fire it up on the bench. Now in this scenario, the LED is behaving as I would expect. When I get it into the Amiga, however, Yes, you get the bright burst of activity and that's fine. But even when it's not active, there's a kind of little flickering. My suspicion here is it just requires a larger value resistor to be in line with the LED. That's an easy thing to solve. The second problem is that in order to put the disco module into this, according to the notch, I'm having to put this in upside down. And that's because I've kind of screwed up the footprints a little bit. Um, I assumed that a right angle would be in a slightly different orientation. That, again, is not insurmountable. In order to test it, I've just kind of cut another slot in and forced it in. Oh, well, that's all right, then! The other thing is that I've put the LED in the centre of the board. As you'll note, that isn't visible when the case is on. My aim, really, was to get some light visible through the vents in the Amiga, so that you had some vague indication that the drive was being accessed when the case was on. I jumped back into KCAD and this time gave the project a name, Flatmate. The latest version of this has the footprints in the right orientation and I've relocated the LED to the top of the board. That means when it's in place in the Amiga, you should be able to see 
with a light coming out of the vents as originally intended. There's always going to be a few people in the comments that are going to say it's only 512 meg. And yes, it is only 512 meg. It's only 10 times larger than the largest hard drive that would have shipped with an Amiga 1200 when it was originally manufactured. 512 meg is more than enough for an Amiga. One of the other things I'd like to point out in this video is that a while ago, and on Star, asked me if I would like to take one of their units and review it. And I said, yes, as long as you don't mind me being honest and you're quite happy to wait quite a long time to hear anything about it. They sent me an AD208S Pro, which is a 4K digital microscope. And I've been using it now for the last three months. And I must admit it has improved my workflow. The ability to record in 4K straight off the microscope while using it has been a game changer. I've mounted it on the same arm that my other microscope was on, which is not quite designed to fit, but it's working perfectly. The 4K output is excellent, and you've seen it already on several of my build videos, particularly when doing surface mount components. You'll also see it in this video for both the surface mount and through hole soldering. There are a couple of things that I would probably change. The focus is very, very sensitive and sometimes quite difficult to just tune in. I found that using the internal LEDs, these just create too much reflection. The fact that you can turn them right down and off is very good and an improvement on my previous scope. So hopefully if you've been watching the channel for a while, some of the footage will speak for itself. So I'd like to say thank you friend on star to sending me the unit. I will put a link to it in the description. It won't be an affiliate because I haven't sorted out that sort of thing yet. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you. If you enjoyed it, please consider clicking like. And if you want to see more like this, then click on subscribe. There are some interesting projects coming up on the channel. And in the meantime, why don't you check this out next?